Like Sam and Jake's, you know, a place in Charlotte, at Charleston, where I grew. When former Charlotte Mayor Harvey Gantt crossed the color line at Clemson University, Cecil Williams covered the three-year court battle and the first day of registration. I remember the, um, that being a very, very cold day in February when uh, we arrived on the Clemson campus. Harvey Gantt stepped from the car, surrounded by reporters and photographers from all over the country. And Cecil loved photography. I think he had a sense of the moment of what was going on. Uh, the, uh, uh, he had the ability also to get often into places that maybe back in those days other photographers didn't wander. On Gantt's first day in 1963, Williams worked alongside with the other journalists, but seized the opportunity breaking away from the pack to grab a different angle. I think as we go forward in the future, this picture would be looked like looked at with a lot of curiosity. It, was, it would be almost as if a man from another planet, a being, an alien from another planet, had arrived on Earth and was doing something for the first time, wherein it's simply an African American who happens to be the first of his race to really go to a college. Over time, they all took pictures of this man revered as a doer and a dreamer. But on an April day in 1968, one account Jackson's precious moments stirred the soul of a grieving nation. It was, it was some kind of day. It was a day like no other day ever in the history of Atlanta. I have a number of pictures of my family that Count Jackson took. And though I don't like the picture because it's a picture of Martin Luther King being drawn on the mule train, uh, to his grave, yeah, but it's still one of the most accurate historical records of that period. As the um, mules uh, was pulling that um, wagon, I just kept shooting. I kept shooting. And you knew that that was a historic moment? Yeah, I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. But as you capture history, sometimes you don't stage it. Former Southern Christian Leadership Conference worker and current North Carolina business executive, George Shinholster was there that day. This picture, and you can just look at the involvement of the, the, the variety of people that come from all over the place just to pay homage at that point in time to Martin Luther King. On many assignments, their shots were snapped in harm's way. We were arrested and uh, harassed. Uh, I was never, I was never beaten, uh, I was just threatened, but uh, these are some of the things that, that, you, that you expect, and you just, just pray for the best. Uh, there were numbers of photographers that got beaten up, uh, their films uh, confiscated, their cameras crushed, uh, and it wasn't easy being a photographer. But the black photographer was right there, and oft times spotlighted himself for a part of the beating and the shoving and the kicking, having his equipment torn up, destroyed. Yeah. Nobody to report it to. Nobody would listen. Oh, no. I remember very distinctly um, in the very beginning of the uh, 1968 um, so-called Orangeburg Massacre, on the first night, the students went to the bowling alley um, there was a glass broken, um, and the demonstrators uh, started to um, recede and, and started running, and police officers started running behind them. And of course, as everyone was coming in my direction, even though I had a camera um, around my neck and I was photographing all this, I too began running, and police officers were, of course, swinging, and had I stopped, I would have been hit just as well. One of the uh, fantasies that photographers uh, live with constantly, particularly in the, in the face of danger, is that their cameras are some sort of protecting amulet, and that as long as they have a camera around their neck or on their shoulders, that they are safe. Especially for a lot of the photographers that we think about who would have been people of color, African Americans, it was certainly not an amulet at all. You know, it didn't give them license to do anything. I mean, you know, the, the target was black. And uh, and uh, didn't it, care who didn't care who, and so it was it was uh, they they probably received a double dose on some occasions. Prints from the front lines helped pave the way 
and open the doors of newsrooms across America. Todd Duncan is a photo editor with the Charlotte Observer. He carefully selects shots for many of the daily editions and recognizes a sincere debt of gratitude. They showed us the, the possible. Uh, they showed us what photojournalism could do. They showed us and taught us about the power of photography uh, and what we could do with our photographs. These people demonstrated that uh, there were uh, uh, needs to have uh, many other sets of eyes and ears uh, listening and looking at uh, what are conditions in America. You always like to feel that, that, that you've made an impact. However, you don't know. You just, you just want to hope that, you, that you've made an impact. The gratifying thing is that the, the people who come to you and, uh, and uh, sing your praises. They open a lot of doors for me, and they also open my mind. Diane Curtin's photo of a grandmother and child facing personal tragedy won the Georgia Associated Press News Photo of the Year. The South Carolina native has worked at local papers in Georgia and North Carolina. She recognizes the works of those who walked before her. I think we need to pass that on as far as encouraging younger people to go into this field, encouraging, encouraging them to take a stand. History has been lost. Had I known, had I known what I was involved in, and uh, uh, I would have had enough material for books and books on top of books, but I just didn't. When I went bankrupt, and my file and equipment I had at that time was seized by the state. The thought just, I guess, never occurred to me to uh, uh, document more things and, than, than I did. The visual perspectives of those once excluded from the nation's mainstream are important for preserving America's past. These individuals were virtually anonymous uh, to the general public. And I think today the best thing we can do uh, is to bring these individuals to the public notice that they were A, artists, and B, not necessarily in a declining order, but second, uh, they were participants in a great period of historic change, and they changed and helped change America. So this storytelling is absolutely essential to glue and bind one generation to the next. Otherwise, it just gets lost. The late James Vanderzee, who helped inspire the Harlem Renaissance, and award-winning photographer Gordon Parks, are America's best-known people of color who express themselves with pictures. Across the South, some history is being saved. Thank you ever so much, Tim. Right? Thank you very much. Cecil Williams is promoting a book titled Freedom and Justice. It covers 40 years of the movement in South Carolina. And there's also a video bearing the same title. Williams has access to more than 5,000 prints and negatives from as many assignments. One of the biggest collections of headlines and photos from the black press can be found at Howard University's Moreland Spingarn Research Center. A collection including the nation's first black newspaper, Freedom's Journal. It was published in 1827. Historically, black colleges and universities throughout the United States have taken the leadership responsibility in documenting and preserving uh, black history and culture. Uh, these institutions, regardless of where they are located, regardless of their circumstances, or regardless of their age, have taken the initiative. They've been in the forefront. That is the case at North Carolina Central University in Durham. Alec Rivera's works are showcased at the campus library in an exhibit titled pictorial echoes of the past. Even larger campuses have an interest. USC South Carolina Library in Columbia carries a number of works paying tribute to the efforts of black photographers. One of their proudest collections is that of Richard Samuel Roberts, who ran a studio in Columbia from 1920 to 1936. The collection contains more than 3,000 images. 
A book of prints titled A True Likeness tells the Robert story. So we're committed to uh, the location and acquisition and preservation of, of collections like the Roberts collection. Uh, and I think at least for this state, uh, we, we probably have the most extensive uh, African-American collection. Historic Ebenezer Baptist Church on Atlanta's Auburn Avenue is home to Count Jackson's unforgettable moment. The photographers, particularly the black photographers in the early days, were always part of the front line of the struggle. And um, we're grateful to all of those who, who labored and who suffered and who still do, uh, just to help us tell the story. Rivera, Williams, Jackson, and Peeler all took chances risking a great deal to tell a story and make a contribution. Still, there are many more unsung heroes just like them. People who have never gotten the recognition, attention, or opportunity to have their say. Through their time and talent, they've all given us so much. Moments that will last forever. Moments they caught with the blink of an eye. I'm Steve Crump. Thanks so much for joining us.